Oh, and it is your favorite Punch! Falcon Punch, Mr. Falcon Punch, 996, the Underrated King, the Recommendation Master, and of course YouTube's number one Doro Hidoro fanboy, back to bring you guys another new video. And today's video is going to be a topic discussion video, since I really haven't done one of those in a while, and today's topic discussion is going to be about, you know, disappointing anime and manga series, you know, those series that you're expecting to be great and awesome, but in the end or somewhere in the middle, they just never really reach that greatness. And as always in these type of videos, in the comment section down below, feel free to list off your disappointing anime and manga series. But now we're just going to start off my list, and first off we have Nobunaga. Now Nobunaga started off as a pretty awesome series. I mean the first two episodes were just action packed and really damn badass. But you know, after that, the series kind of deteriorated a bit where there were just some episodes with very subpar action or even no action at all, but it slowly came back towards the end. But the action is not what made this series totally disappointing. What made this series really disappointing was its lack of usage of the concept, because it had a pretty unique concept, which is basically about you know these historical figures kind of coming to the modern age as weapons and helping these individuals with a special ability to kick alien ass. And, you know, that was a pretty damn awesome concept, but it didn't really use it that much. I mean, there's so much more that could have done with the concept, but it really just didn't use it at all. And that's what really made the series disappointing to me, because it had just such a fresh and unique idea, and it was just never used to its fullest potential. Now, this may be due to the series having only, like, I think 12 to 13 episodes, but still, there was just so much that couldn't have been done but they just didn't do it at all. I mean, maybe a season two could fix this, but so far that hasn't been an announcement, so I'm not sure. But I really do think a season two will kind of make this series a lot better. And moving on, we're gonna go with Soul Lead or Not. Now, back then when I heard there was gonna be a spin-off series for Soul Leader, you know, I was pumped up. You know, I was ready because I love Soul Leader. When I watched it for the first time, I just watched that anime like crazy. And it's one of my favorite action shonens out there because it just had such a unique style and great cast of characters. And the action, especially in the anime series, was just so damn badass and stylized. It was completely awesome. So I was pumped for a spinoff. And let's just say Soul Leader Not is not really the Soul Leader I wanted. I mean, yes, I know it's a spin-off series, so it's not exactly going to be identical to the original series, but this series is just such a contrast to the original. It's mind-boggling, especially to consider that the writer is still the same guy. You know, Soul Eater or not, it's still written by the same person who did the original Soul Eater, and I don't know how you just do such a 360 on your writing. I mean, the comedy in Soul Eater or not is not as good as the comedy in the original Soul Eater. I mean, like, Soul Eater has some pretty awesome comedy. Soul Eater or not, it's very hit or miss. I mean, episode 6 of Soul Eater or not, from what I saw, was actually pretty funny. Uh, that was the episode, I think, where they kind of introduced Liz and Patty. And that episode, overall, was really funny. But beside that, a lot of the episodes just are not that good. And also from what we've seen from Soul Leader, the action is not as good and the characters are not as good. It's like it does not feel anything like Soul Leader. In fact, despite it taking place in the same world as the original series, as well as having a couple cameos from the original characters, this feels like a completely different series. I mean, it just feels like this unwanted child of Soul Leader mixed with like some bully blob and it's just unnecessary and I just wish that this series just was a lot better, which is why it's a major disappointment. I mean, it's a spin-off for an awesome series. This couldn't have been so many great things, and instead we kind of get this like Moe slice of life thing with some supernatural soul eater stuff thrown into the mix. And yeah, so yeah, that's a major disappointment right there. I mean, I'm still watching the anime because I'm hoping for it to at least have some soul eater-like moments in the future since it seems like right now the story is sort of starting to unravel so looking forward to that but you know Soul Eater overall or I should say Soul Eater not overall it's just sort of a disappointment so far. Another one will be the Machin X manga series. Now this is an underrated series so a lot of you guys may not know this but it's a manga series that's an adaptation of some like PlayStation 1 video game but anyways the reason why I read this series was because the writer as well as illustrator was Q Hayashida, who if you guys don't know, is the woman who created Doro Hidoro. So obviously, as 
YouTube's number one Doro Hidoro fanboy, I just had to read this series. So I picked it up, I checked it out, and I was really disappointed. I mean, sure, the art is absolutely amazing. I mean, the art style is awesome. You know, Q Hayashida has probably one of the most unique art styles out there in the manga industry. And the main character looks like Mikaido. So, you know, that's a definite plus right there because Mikaido is awesome. But the story was just really weird. It didn't really make that much sense. It was just confusing. But it wasn't weird and confusing like in Doro Hidoro where it's just very entertaining. No, this was just weird. Like, what the hell is going on? I don't understand anything. And that may be due because, you know, it was based off a video game. And I heard the story for the video game was pretty damn weird. So, you know, Q Hayashida didn't really have that much creative freedom with the story. But it was just a major disappointment because I was just expecting, you know, more Q Hayashida badassery awesomeness. And instead, I just got some confusing pile of weirdness with, you know, some awesome artwork. And the last series I'm going to talk about, since I don't want to make this video too long, is probably one of the most disappointing manga series I've ever read, and that is none other than Defense Devil. Now, when I first read this series, you know, I was super excited, because I was expecting this series to be like the next Majin Tante Nero, which was kind of a underrated Shonen Jump series about like a demon detective who kind of solves mysteries and I'm not expecting this series to be a somewhat successor to Majin Tante Nero because it you know featured a devil who basically kind of you know solved cases and crimes for souls so they can enter heaven instead of going to hell and it had a really great concept in the first like 20 chapters or so really great that had awesome mystery comedy and a bit of you know fan service but then as the series went on it went from having really great mystery to being just the most cliche action battle shonen that I've ever read. I mean, it was just so bad. I mean, sure, I know Majin Tante Nero went from a mystery to an action series, but Majin Tante Nero did it right. And Defense Devil had a lot going for it because the mystery was actually a lot better than Majin Tante Nero. Because in Majin Tante Nero, you know, Nero kind of cheated because he had all his devil tools to kind of do the work for him. But in Defense Devil, the main character actually had to do some work. You know, he had to snoop around and find some evidence and everything like that. So the mystery was a lot greater. But then once it turned into an action series, it just really turned into that, that typical cliche, you know, power-up stuff and everything. And it just really wasn't that interesting. And the main character really got annoying because he was way too forgiving. I mean, people were literally stabbing him in the back and he still forgave them, like, no problems, like, whatsoever. Like, no problems, no worries. These people almost destroyed the world. Whatever, you're still my friend. And especially towards the end, oh my god, the main character just pissed the shit out of me. Because I'm not going to spoil it, because in case any of you guys actually want to check it out. Uh, the main character basically knew what the villain's plans all along, and he didn't say shit till the end. Okay, and that, that was just... Oh, I almost want to break my sunglasses right now, because that was just so damn annoying and also they had a really great female character and they just turned her to fan service trash later on just just because and yeah that, that got that out of my system but yeah that's my list of disappointing anime and manga series i mean there are probably others that i've kind of overlooked or you know don't really remember but i didn't want to make this video way too long but as always in the comment section down below be sure to list off uh, your disappointing anime and manga series. And as always, I am Mr. Falcon Punch 996 Like, comment, subscribe. And if you haven't done any of that yet, you'll be Falcon Punch in the face. So you better do it. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.